Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we have come and gathered that we might worship God together today. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you as we have come and gathered together, both here in the sanctuary as well as those who join us online, as together we create a unique and wonderful community of faith to lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise to God. A special word of welcome to guests and visitors who are with us this morning. It is always a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. And I do hope that if you are looking for a church home, that you might find unity to be a place of worship and service that God is calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me, with Pastor Molly, with someone sitting near you following the service, that we might have opportunity to answer any questions that you have and, and certainly offer you a warm welcome as well. As a part of that welcome, I hope that you'll all take time to sign the friendship pads that are found in the pews. They're usually on one end of the pew or the other. This is a chance for us to have a record of all who come and gathered for worship today, as well as a chance, I hope, for you to call one another by name as those friendship pads are passed down and back by the end of the service, you'll be able to greet each other together today. If you are interested in learning more about our congregation, please do speak with one of us. We also have the second day of a connections class that will be available on um, April the 28th during the Sunday school hour. So I hope that you'll come and join us for that as well. Special thanks to those who participated yesterday in Go Mad Day, Go Make a Difference Day out at Bethel Woods Camp and Conference Center. Certainly word was a marvelous day together and the weather was beautiful as well. Uh, if you have children for the children's choir, children's choir begins this afternoon for the next session. I hope that you'll come back and be a part of that. We are hosting a concert this afternoon by the York County Choral Society. I um, hope that you already purchased your tickets for that because the tickets have been sold out and they won't be selling them at the door. So just to give you that quick update, if you're planning on coming back this afternoon, hope you've already have your tickets for that. We're in the midst of our stewardship season here at Unity, and our theme this year is sharing the good news. One of the ways in which you can be a good steward with us is to pick up your stewardship packet. It is found in the table on, in the hallway off the North X. Uh, that way the church doesn't have to mail it to you. If you're able to pick it up today and bring it with you, that's another act of good stewardship, which we certainly greatly appreciate. Our Stewardship Commitment Sunday is coming up on April the 28th. In your bulletin, you'll find many opportunities for worship and service and opportunities to learn and grow, um, especially the faith formation opportunities on writing your personal memoir, the Fort Mill History Tour, which is going to ask some good and important questions about our history here in Fort Mill, draw your attention to both of those. Uh, the Kaleidoscope Ministries beginning again and seeking buddies, so I draw your attention to that, um, that announcement. The Congregational Grounds Work Day is coming up Saturday, April the 27th. And on Sunday, March, May the 5th, we've called a congregational meeting uh, to consider changes to the bylaws that will allow the possibility for youth to serve as an elder or a deacon for just a single one-year term. You'll find more information in the bulletin and also in a newsletter article that will come out uh, this week as well about that. But do let us know if you have any questions about that as well. Um, along those lines, the nominating committee is seeking those that you feel might be called to serve as elders and deacons. Uh, please use the um, email address in the bulletin to send in those suggestions through April the 24th. One additional way to serve uh, is through CPR, and um, Susan Benfield is going to share a little bit with us about that upcoming class sponsored by the health ministry team. Good morning. Good morning. Health Ministries planned two classes this spring. One was held last Saturday, and that was a first aid class. Even though it's over, I'm going to take a minute to tell you about it in case this is something that you might be interested in in the future. I'm sure we will do it again. Um, it was at the end of the Fort Mill School District spring break, so I know that affected some people's ability to attend. I'm happy to say that it was very interesting and helpful. Of the six of us in the class, most of us had some experience with first aid training. However, we learned some new information and got a chance to review and ask questions about updates on certain first aid techniques. We talked about heat stroke, dehydration, burns, cuts and abrasions, 
bone breaks, and allergic reactions, to name a few. It was time well spent. Next up is the spring CPR AED class. This will take place the first Saturday of May, so that's three weeks from yesterday. It'll take place in the fellowship hall beginning at 9.30 and lasting for about two and a half hours. So about noon will be done. There is video instruction and practice on a mannequin. If practicing on a mannequin on the floor is a limiting factor for you, know that you can practice with your mannequin on a table. The minutes between onset of symptoms of cardiac arrest and the arrival of first responders is critical. It might be three minutes, it might be 10 minutes. But you can learn and practice the skills that you need to maintain blood flow to the brain as well as breathing. You'll learn first aid for choking as well, and this is not just for adults, but also in infants and children choking, as well as use of the AEDs. You may be surprised to know that we now have three AED units on our campus. Cost for the class is $50, and that is payable at the door in cash as requested by Innovative Solutions. So we do need a head count, even though you don't have to pay anything ahead of time. You can call or text me and my numbers in today's bulletin, or you can call the church office. It will put you on the list. Give this some prayerful thought and see if the May 4th CPR class might be a good fit for you. You're welcome to bring a friend or a neighbor or a relative, anybody that is not a member of Unity, but just be sure to provide contact information with me or the church office so that I can give them a call ahead of time or reach out a few days ahead as a reminder and also with a few suggestions on what to bring. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. We live in the radiance of your glory. Our worship comes from the gladness you have put in our hearts. We give you thanks for the peace of your salvation. Oh, hear the joy of our praise for your grace and mercy. Let us worship God.
You may be seated. Friends, to repent is to turn away from sin and to turn towards Jesus Christ. Scripture promises that when we confess, God hears our cries and wipes away our sins. Trusting in God's promises of new life, let us now join in our prayer of confession together, first out loud and then silently. Let us pray. Wondrous God, you sent Jesus Christ into this world that we would know your love and share your life. Yet we resist you and fail to walk in your ways. Your good news becomes stale to us. We lose our all at your power over sin and death. We allow the cares of this world to rob us of our Easter joy. Cleanse our hearts, O God, and set them on fire for you and your word. Remind us that we belong to you. Give us zeal in our living, that our witness may be true and vibrant in service to you. Amen. The tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. There is no darkness now, only light. God continues to renew us and to restore us. Hear and believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. seated. This morning we've got the great and wonderful gift to have opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of baptism for Henry Cook. And so let me invite the Cook family to come forward as well as Bob Mobley who comes to represent the session today. I want to encourage all of you to be a part of this time in the service as well. You'll see the parts that you'll respond with are on the second page of your bulletin. So if you want to go ahead and turn those, that'll save us the sound of all the pages turning in the middle of our moment here together. Hear these words of Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And the promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Henry Robert, son of Madison, and Bob Cook to receive the sacrament of baptism. Madison and Bob, as you bring Henry for baptism today, I ask you these questions. First, do you desire that Henry be baptized? Do you? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? 
Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to Henry? Do you? Gregory Louise, do you promise to be a good big sister for Henry and help him learn about Jesus? Good, thank you. Do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Henry by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's church? If you do, if so, please respond, we do. We do. Then together let us stand and declare what it is that we believe using the words found in your bulletin from a declaration of faith. We believe God acts by the Spirit in baptism, calling us by name to be His, cleansing us from corruption, giving us new life, setting us in the fellowship of believers. Baptism reminds us that God loves us long before we can love God, and that faith and repentance are necessary as our response to God's love. Though we are baptized but once, our response should continue and deepen throughout life. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing rebirth. We praise you that in baptism you give us your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into all truth. So together we pray, gracious God, pour out your Spirit upon Henry, upon us, and upon this water, that this font may be your womb of new birth. Strengthen us all to serve you with joy until that day when you make all things new. Amen. Henry Robert, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Henry with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Henry, you are a child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Through baptism, God has affirmed Henry as a member of this community of faith and has received him into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I charge you, the people of this congregation, friends and family, do to love and support Madison and Bob assisting them in the nurturing of Henry. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome Henry into Christ's church, for we are all one in Christ. We promise to love, encourage, and support you, Madison and Bob, and promise to share the good news of the gospel with Henry. As we have opportunity to sing together, Jesus Loves Me, I'll walk Henry through the congregation, introducing him to his new church family, his brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandparents in the faith.
Madison and Bob, what a day of celebration for your church family, for your own family. What a great day that we might celebrate Henry's baptism together. As you tell him the story, as you remember this day together, we have a chrismon for your tree as well as his baptism certificate as well. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Our first scripture reading for today is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Let us hear this word of God to us today. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. At this time, let me invite our young friends and children to come and spend a few moments together here over on the steps with me. If you are watching from home, hope that you'll draw near the screen that you might be a part of this special time together as well. Well, good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good, good. It is good to see you. Still have some friends who are on their way. What a great morning it is. And we are so grateful that you are here. Worship is always better when you are here to be a part of it. So thank you so much for coming and being a part of worship together this morning. You know, the scripture that we just read is kind of a little confusing. Uh, it comes to us and, and uh, there's this person who's talking to Jesus about being born from above and being born by the Spirit. And part of what I think we recognize and remember is what we just had a chance to celebrate with Henry's baptism is that in the Spirit, God calls each and every one of us children of God. That's what a wonderful gift that is, that we might all be called children of God. Because that's who God's created us to be. And one of the ways in which we get a chance to respond to that is to think about the ways in which we continue to see God as a part of our life. It doesn't just happen in baptism, which we celebrated today, but it gets to happen each and every time in our life when we know that Jesus is with us. Is, are there anything, that, is there anything in your life that you like just really love to do, something that's, that's really fun or that you really enjoy? You know, what are some of those things? Anybody, what's, what's something you just love to do? Eat ice cream. See, that was up at the top of my list too. That's right. Yeah. What do you think? Bikes, riding bikes. Yeah. What do you think? Ah, uh, scooters. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Love God. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Ah, that is good too. Yeah. What do you think? Carowinds. Yeah. What about you? Oh, we do. Wow, very good. All of those things, right? When there's many more that we have that we just love to do, right? And some of those times when we are doing exactly the thing that we most love, it almost feels like Jesus is right there with us, right? And I think we can find that sometimes here at church in the ways in which we get a chance to be a part of worship, the chance we have to go to Sunday school and to learn and to serve, all those places where we just know that we're doing exactly the thing that God wants us to do. We also know that Jesus is with us during that time too. So can y'all remember that with me this week? Yeah, Jesus gives us those fun things so that we might know that he's with us then too. So let's pray together, all right? I'll pray a little bit and y'all can repeat after me. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. Uh, we thank you, thank you that you call us, you call us. Children, of God. children of God. Help us to find, us to find. those things that are most fun 
because we know that you'll be there. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming up this morning. If you are first grade and under and want to go to children and worship or nursery, you can head out this way. If you want to head back and sit with your parents, that's great too. And we're going to surround you all with our song of blessing. Our second scripture reading for this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke from the 24th chapter. We'll read today verses 13 to 35. Beginning at the beginning of this year, we've read through the entire gospel of Mark. We finished that journey on Easter Sunday. And so now in these Sundays after Easter, we're following Jesus' post-resurrection appearances with his disciples as the other Gospels share those stories with us. All of this is a part of this year's stewardship campaign, Sharing the Good News. As we see how those first disciples' lives were transformed and changed by Jesus' resurrection, we hope to find inspiration and wisdom for our own lives of faith as we share the good news of Christ's resurrection and all that God is doing in our midst here at Unity Presbyterian Church. So this morning, we're returning to Easter Sunday, to Resurrection Day, as two disciples leave Jerusalem and walk to the small town of Emmaus. They are joined on that journey by a stranger who changes everything. So let us hear this word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What were you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, What things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they were coming near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in and stayed with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. Jesus appearing to the disciples on the road to Emmaus is one of my favorite biblical stories because it has it all, right? There's the intrigue of this stranger joining the two disciples on the road. There's the dramatic mood shift from despair to elation. There's the moment when their eyes are opened in the breaking of the bread. There's the mystery of Jesus disappearing. And then there's a journey back to Jerusalem in the middle of the night to share this good news. Yes, I'm sure there are dozens and dozens of sermons that could be preached from just this one text. So perhaps the challenge for preachers is to try to choose just one. So approaching this text as a part of our stewardship campaign this year, I'd like us actually to focus in on just a single verse. That's verse 32. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? And I want to ask you, and ask myself for that matter, when have you noticed your heart burning within you? What are those moments when you feel closest to God? What are those things that you just cannot wait to do, where you feel compelled to get up and join in, even after a long and tiring day? Yes, where is your heart on fire? Because Jesus is there. As Presbyterians, we sometimes talk about those moments with a theology of vocation. And by vocation, I I don't mean just your job or your employment. No, vocation comes from the Latin vocare, which means to call. And it refers to the work a person is called to do by God. Perhaps you've heard Frederick Buechner's classic definition of vocation. He says, the kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work, A, that you need to do, and B, that the world needs to have done. He says, if you really get a kick out of your work, you've presumably met requirement A, but if your work is writing cigarette ads, you've probably missed requirement B. On the other hand, if your work is being a doctor in a leper colony, you've probably met requirement B. But if most of the time you're bored or depressed by it, the chances are you've not only bypassed A, but you're probably not helping your patients much either. He says, neither the hair shirt nor the soft birth will do. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Yes, your vocation is the place where your heart's on fire, where your deep gladness and joy meet the world's deep hunger and need. It's one way to think about stewardship, isn't it? Stewardship, especially of our time and our talents. The places where our hearts are on fire, the places where we meet the risen Christ is where God's calling us to serve. So as you look at your time and talent sheet this year, I ask you to ask yourself, what warms my heart? Do you love to sing? Do you love to see children and youth experience the gospel? Do you like to meet new people? Do you love to provide support and nurture for others who are serving Christ? Do you love to serve with your hands? Do you love to serve behind the scenes? There are far too many opportunities for me to name them all this morning. But I do encourage you to begin your time and talent sheet with that question. Where is my heart on fire? Now, I will readily admit that sometimes that connection between our deepest passions and the world's deepest needs is not obvious. In fact, looking at a sheet of paper with hundreds of ways to get involved, it may appear that what you have to give is not particularly unique or special, 
maybe not even needed or churchy or spiritual, right? But I do encourage you, though, because sometimes we just need to go for a walk to Emmaus. Sometimes we just need to try something and be surprised when our heart, in fact, does start to burn within us. Because I assure you that God has blessed each and every one of us with a heart and a passion to use for God's glory. Even and especially if we haven't discovered exactly what that is yet. Yes, all of us have something to give. We give in response to this good news of resurrection that we know on Easter Sunday. And it will take all of us giving and serving with hearts on fire to faithfully fulfill the ministry to which God is calling us. All this reminds me of a story about a king who had a beautiful garden beside his palace in which he loved to walk. And in the middle of the garden was a large and beautiful fountain of water. One day as he was walking through the garden, the king grew tired. And so he sat down under a tree and before he knew it, he'd fallen asleep. While he was asleep, he dreamed that he was walking in his garden. But this time, there was something different. There was a sweet fragrance that wafted through the air and made the whole garden smell more wonderful than anything he had ever known. As he looked closer, he saw that this fragrance was coming from the fountain. But instead of water, the fountain was now filled with perfume. And when he woke from his dream, the king decided he needed to have this fragrance in his garden so he would, too, in, in fact, fill his fountain with perfume. And yet he knew that even he as the king did not have the funds to buy all the perfume that he needed. So instead, he came up with a plan. The king sent out invitations to everyone in the kingdom to come to a party he would host in the garden. And the only requirement was that everyone needed to bring one small vial of perfume. So the invitation went out. Everyone knew they had to come. The day of the party arrived. The food and drinks were set out. The fountain had been drained. As everyone in the entire kingdom entered the garden, they passed by the fountain. They poured their vials into the pool. And once everyone had arrived, the fountain was full. The guests then stayed for several hours. They all enjoyed the king's hospitality. And then finally, when they all went home, the king went straight to the fountain. He sniffed deeply so that he could smell the beautiful fragrance. But there was nothing. He reached down. He dipped his hand in the liquid to taste it. It was only water, not one drop of perfume. King realized what had happened. Everyone had brought a small vial of water to the party. They thought that since the whole kingdom was coming, everybody was bringing perfume, that their little contribution wouldn't matter. And so if their contribution didn't matter, no one would know that they brought water instead of perfume. But no one brought perfume. Everyone brought water. My friends, the invitations have been sent. The party, Commitment Sunday, is just two weeks away. What will you bring? What time, what talent, what financial resource will you bring to Christ? Will you commit your entire life to Christ once more? For we are on this journey together, and Christ will meet us on the way. As we walk, as we worship, as we serve, as we study, as we each bring our gifts, as we share the good news together, we just might discover a fountain full of perfume. We're not our hearts burning within us. 
Did we not see Jesus? Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, you call us, you remind us, you claim us that we are children of God. In that claim upon us, you provide us gifts to share. And yet so often we think we don't matter. What you've given to us surely could not be of use back to you, O Lord. Inspire us. Give us faith. Set our hearts on fire. Remind us that as we give, as we serve, we meet you. And we do so together. So we pray these things in the name of our crucified and yet risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Trusting in God's love for us, God promises to hear us when we pray to celebrate the joys of our life, but also to bring those things that are heavy on our hearts. So let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. God of abundant grace, we gather today just as your first disciples gathered in the wake of the resurrection, in joy, in wonder, in disbelief. We remember that whenever we gather in your name, you appear in our midst, offering us the comfort of your presence and the assurance of your love. And we give you thanks that like those first disciples, you give us a community to practice our faith. Grant us grace to hold space for one another's doubts and questions. Give us courage to admit that we do not have all the answers. Make this community where we explore what it means to receive your forgiveness and dedicate our lives to you. We remember that when the risen Christ appeared to his disciples, he offered them peace. And today we pray for your peace in our world, O God. A peace that is not only the absence of conflict, but the presence of wholeness for all people. We pray for innocent victims of violence in Ukraine and Gaza and Haiti and other places around the world. We ask that both far away and close to home that you would put an end to violence. Teach us to recognize our shared humanity, our shared status as your beloved children, each of us created in your image. Lead each of us to prioritize peace both in our homes and communities and in the wider world. We pray this day for all who sit in seats of power. Fill their hearts with compassion and their decisions with wisdom, that all may have the chance not only to survive, but to flourish in your abundance. Most of all, God, we ask that you would open our eyes to see the signs of resurrection life that are all around us, as we journey this road, we ask that you would help us to recognize you, help us to hear your voice, and to know how to follow faithfully, that we may begin to imagine the future of your shalom in the world. Loving God, we pray for members of our community who need your care. Ease the suffering of the sick and speed the healing of those in recovery. Comfort all those who mourn this day and bring rest to all who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious. Lord of life, remind us of our call to love one another as you have loved us, with a love that casts out fear and creates your beloved community. Grant us energy to serve one another with humility and hope. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes again and all things are made new. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ as he taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout our Sundays of Stewardship, we have opportunity to invite members of our congregation to come and share with us this year a bit of good news, the ways they've experienced Christ at work in our midst. We have a unique opportunity today to have a few of our children uh, to come with Catherine McGregor to share with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Catherine McGregor. I'm the Director of Christian Education here at Unity. This morning I'm joined by some of Unity's children. You may have heard people say, or you may have even said yourself, children are the future of the church. Yes, but I'm here to tell you that children are also the present of the church. The good news about the good news is that it is for everyone no matter your age. To expand upon what our pastors say each week, our congregation is closer to God's beloved kingdom when everyone is a part, no matter their age. I think that's why three out of the four gospels tell the story of Jesus blessing the children and reminding his disciples that if we want to see Jesus, we should approach him with the eagerness, joy, and faith of a child. So today, our children have some stories to share about when they experience the good news of God's love at Unity. We challenge you this week to consider where you experience God's good news and how you might share your time, your talent, and your treasure so that others know the good news of God's love as well. After each child shares, I invite us all to say together, and that is good news. Can we practice? And that is good news. Great. So children, tell us some good news. I like to dress up and teach people about the Magi during the Wax Museum. And that is good news. I really, I really enjoyed the glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt I did a while ago. And I'm really looking forward to going to passport camp um, during the summer. And that is good news. In Sunday school, I learned God's stories. And that is good news. I learn about God and children worship. I and that is good news. I enjoyed spreading God's love with my growing Christians class, where we made buckets to help people who have been affected by a natural disaster. And that is good news. Jesus was made a for the Bible tells me so. And that is good news. Friends, in response to this wonderful good news that we have heard from the lips of the children, we now have an opportunity to share that good news in the form of our gifts, the things that we bring to this community, our time, our talent, our treasure. So whether you give online or place your offering in the plates or the, as they are passed this morning, let us continue sharing the good news and worshiping God with the giving of our gifts.
us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the bounty of your grace. You create us in your image, you shower us with love, and you give us a future with hope. We ask that you would bless these gifts that we offer today. Make us good stewards of the resources that you have entrusted to us. And may these gifts bring joy and peace in our church community, but also in the wider world. This day and every day as we serve and follow you. Amen. My friends, we go forth from this place as our service of worship concludes. May our lives of worship and service begin anew. As we go sincerely and completely, may we offer to the Lord our hearts. For Christ meets us as we journey this way together. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.